Well, thank you for those very kind words, Jeff, and for Bob and Larry for being here today. And I am honored to have your support. And whew, thank you all for coming on uh, what is actually a pretty beautiful January day. Um, hopefully, maybe some of you were at the next building on purpose. Um, there is a, quite a festival going on. Hopefully, you didn't walk in and notice a bunch of feathers at the Prairie Invitational Pigeon Show at the MNP building. <laughs> I am not even making that up, I swear. Uh, so thank you for coming out and finding uh, the right building. And just, what a turnout. This, this, is, this is quite a feeling for me. Uh, this is very surreal after being involved in politics and obviously growing up here. This is, this is a real feeling. And, Seeing a lot of familiar faces in this crowd, uh, folks that I went to school with, folks that I've played hockey and golf with, uh, small business owners and farmers that I recognize from our community that are the backbone of our community, and even some teachers. I saw Jim Perhura here. He helped me learn how to write, which <laughs> served these guys pretty well later on, and I think will serve you all very well. He was my AP English teacher, advanced English teacher in high school, and I put a lot of those skills to use. So it's some teachers that have made a, a very big impact on my life. And so all that to say, many of you know me from, it's a very diverse parts of my life. But there's one thing that you likely all know about me, and that that is Portage is my home. I was a kid who had the most supportive parents imaginable, Jim and Sean Lee Leslie, who offered me nothing but love, guidance and encouragement to take any path that I wanted in life. And when I graduated from PCI and went off to university, I really had no idea what I wanted to do. All I knew is that I wanted to do something meaningful, that I wanted to make a difference for people, and that I wanted to fight for what I believe in. My life has been a journey where I've rolled with the punches and I've embraced the opportunities. But this is where it all started for me. And the reason I've invited you all here today is to talk about what is going on in our country. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Politics can be boring, can be frustrating, and it can be downright stupid at times. But the old saying goes, you might not take an interest in politics, but politics most certainly will take an interest in you. And never has that been more true than under the current gang of liberals running the government in Ottawa right now. Justin Trudeau cynically divides Canadians for his own political gain time and time again. He thinks he can divide and conquer. East versus West, rural versus urban, or vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Instead of uniting Canadians, he recklessly insults everyday people like you and me and our way of life. People have had enough. We see it on flags, we see it everywhere, we hear it when we talk to our friends and family about this at the Christmas dinner. And you know what? I have had enough too. And some of you know me as, we'll call it outspoken. I speak frankly, because I believe it's important to be authentic and to speak the truth, even when it's uncomfortable. And in my view, political correctness has simply gone too far. Yes, you should be kind. You should be caring, you should be respectful, and you should be tolerant. But that doesn't mean you should be able to be steamrolled or silenced or cancelled. And I want to fight back. The sad reality is that Canadians are losing hope in a brighter future. For the first time in our history, people worry that their children's lives might not be better than their own. And who can blame them? Have you filled up with gas lately? Have you been to the grocery store lately? The cost of government has driven up the cost of living for all of us. The Liberals have printed more and more money so they can spend more and more money. And who's benefiting? I don't think it's anyone in this room. We should be focusing on job creation. And wealth creation should not be a dirty word. But this Liberal government chooses to stifle business with regulation and taxation and ultimately care more about their righteous virtue signaling than they do about enabling prosperity for Canadians. Instead of being a tool for good, 
This Liberal government has put the Canadian dream out of reach for a lot of people. We need change. And I want to be part of it. And that is why I am proud to announce today that I am running to be your next Conservative Member of Parliament for the riding of Porter's Lisgar. Now, some of you probably saw this coming, or maybe aren't all that surprised. And some of you might be wondering to yourselves, geez, why would, why would anybody do this? Why would Brandon want to do this? I know, I'm a young guy, and I just got engaged. And everybody, let's hear it for my beautiful fiance, Kaylee. But the reality is, I'm doing this to protect my home, our home, our community, and our way of life is worth standing up for. I am the right conservative with the right experience to get things done. I know how Ottawa works because I've been there and I've gotten results. As mentioned, I've advised cabinet ministers and members of parliament on important issues like protecting the rights of law-abiding gun owners and keeping our streets safe and criminals behind bars. And more recently, I've been working to stand up for our farmers in the face of a government that is imposing terrible ideas that will impact our farm productivity and our farm profitability. But as much as I love to talk about my belief in smaller government and respect for our farmers and how we can give you back control of your lives, you could hear that from just about any candidate. But I want to tell you my story. Because we know where I come from, you'll know where I'm going. Everyone here who knows me knows I grew up a farm kid. But I think many of, many of you will also know that I'm going to be a lot more help to all of us by trying to find ways to lower our taxes and to fight for the tools that farmers need to feed Canada and the world than I am at actually replacing a, shovel, a shovel, cultivator shovel or <laughs> unplugging a combine. <laughs> but you know what? Boy, do I respect our farmers, many of which I see in the room here today. I watched my dad, Jim Leslie, my whole life. I watched his work ethic. I watched his sacrifice. I saw the long hours. I listened to the dust cough. And on occasion, I even dealt with that stress-driven harvest temper that can emerge. <laughs> but I also saw his pride in growing crops to feed not only our community, our country, but the entire world. And in stewarding the land in a responsible manner. But it wasn't just my dad. There's a reason it's called the family farm. My mom, Shauna Lee, is our family's rock and just as much a part, a part of our farm. She supported us. She cooked. She did the books. She struggled. She sacrificed. She cared. And she smiled through it all. And you know what? My family is special to me. But that same story is repeated across this community, across this province, and across this country thousands of times over. And throughout my time advocating for our community in Ottawa, I never lost sight of where I came from. I never lost my love for agriculture or for the rural way of life. And those views were emboldened when I joined MP Robert Sopak's office after the unfortunate defeat of the Harper government in 2015 as a key advisor to him. Now, Bob is the most passionate defender of the rural way of life, of traditional heritage activities like hunting, trapping, and angling that I have ever met and perhaps in all of Canada. And I'm incredibly honored to have his support on this campaign and more importantly, to count him as a friend and a mentor of mine. And in 2019, I had the chance of a lifetime to come and manage Candace Bergen's re-election campaign right here at home. And during that campaign, I had the chance to live in Winkler and I toured all over this riding. And it really reminded me of why I love where I am from. And so after that election of getting a strong mandate for over 70% of you in this riding for Candace, I decided it was time to get back to my roots. And so I sought out a job in agriculture. And in January of 2020, I joined the Grain Growers of Canada to stand up for the needs of farmers 
in the face of a government that simply doesn't understand anything about agriculture. And since then, I have had the privilege of fighting for farmers like my dad and Gunter and many of you here today, Carl in the back smiling. And day to day, I've had the chance to work with leaders from our farm community, listening to them, learning from them, and standing up for them. And I've been proud to have been able to put my skills of knowing how Ottawa works with my agricultural background to help improve the lives of farmers right across Canada. And in that vein, I'm very pleased to have the endorsement of former chair of the Grain Growers of Canada, Jeff Nielsen, and of pre president of the Western Canadian Wheat Growers and Porter's Lisgar resident, Gunter Yoakum. So thank you for that, Gunter. <laughs> now, like I said earlier, I have always wanted to make a difference and help our communities. I have loved working on behalf of farmers, and I want to continue to do that as your next member of parliament. Once Candace announced that she was not going to be running again in the next election, literally that day, within hours, the calls and texts started flooding in. Brandon, is it time? Are you going? Are you doing this? And so I had to think about it. And I thought about it for months. I spoke daily with Kaylee about it. Who is my rock? And I could not have made this decision without her unwavering support. We are a team, and I am so proud to have her by my side. But really, what made this decision easy was knowing that I have the opportunity to have a job with the best bosses around, my friends and neighbors right here in Portage Lisgar. I don't want to just sit back and complain about politics. I want to get in the ring to fight and to make a difference. And I definitely don't want to watch my home community send the wrong person to Ottawa to just be another idle suit. Folks, the reality is that Justin Trudeau thinks you don't matter. He thinks that if you can't take a bus or a subway to get where you're going, you must hate the environment and you should be punished. Let's get real. Driving to work, taking your kids to school or hockey, it's not a luxury. It's part of our way of life. I don't need to tell anybody here either that heating your home during a manageable winter isn't exactly a luxury either. But I can tell you one thing, that I have always opposed a carbon tax and I will always oppose a carbon tax. Trudeau also thinks farmers are tax cheats and you don't care about the environment, Gunter. Then <laughs> you couldn't be more wrong. So instead of punishing new taxes and forcing fertilizer reductions on our farmers that will drive up the price of food for all of us, I will defend our farmers' way of life every step of the way. Our farmers are the true conservationists and government should treat you as such. Justin Trudeau also thinks that law-abiding fire, law firearms owners and hunters are criminals and that they're dangerous. I don't. So instead of spending hundreds of millions of dollars of your money confiscating property from law-abiding citizens, I think we should focus on the real problems of illegal handguns getting on our streets, where the real problems are. Trudeau wants to censor ideas that he doesn't like. I will defend your freedom of speech and oppose Trudeau's plan to control what you see and say online. And as your MP, I will support building pipelines to move our oil and gas to market. Now, a lot of people say that Justin Trudeau opposes pipelines. That's actually not quite true. He is perfectly okay with pipelines as long as they are not in Canada. He's perfectly okay with bringing in oil from Saudi Arabia or Venezuela. I will say no to dirty oil from dictators and yes to paychecks for our people. Yeah. And I will work with Pierre Polyev and the rest of our conservative team to repeal Trudeau's anti-pipeline legislation 
that has made it impossible to get any energy projects built in this country. And I will help stop the wasteful spending, which I can assure you is even worse than you think it is. <laughs> and I think a great first place to start will be by scrapping the $1.4 billion a year that goes to the CBC each and every year. You don't need to give your money to a bunch of downtown Toronto elites to tell you that you are what's wrong with this country. You aren't. You are the wealth creators. You are the builders. You are the foundation. And you are the future. And that is all worth fighting for. I will fight for our rural communities. I will fight for people who go to work, who play by the rules, who care about their families, and they give back to their communities. I will fight for you with the passion and energy that you deserve. Now is the time to restore the promise of Canada. When I see stories about nearly 2 million people going to a food bank last month, or the rapid increase in the number of people looking for help to get assisted suicide, it breaks my heart. Our country is hurting right now. But I want to help turn that hurt into hope. And that means rejecting new woke fads and getting back to basics. That means having a government that will live within its means, just like you and I do each and every day. We need to put money back in the pockets of Canadians and help them get back control of their own lives. Now, the people in this room, the people who call this place home, are strong. And I believe you deserve a strong, conservative voice in Parliament. I'm a proud Canadian. I'm a true conservative, and I am the right conservative for this job, and I hope I can count on your support. But I can't do this alone. But I can't do this alone. So if you agree with me that we need a strong, loud advocate to protect our rural way of life from a government that does not respect you, buy a membership. If you agree with me that our next MP should have deep roots in this riding, buy a membership. And if you agree with me that your next MP should have a track record of getting results for our communities, buy a membership. This election is a little bit different than what you might be used to. Now, we haven't had a nomination race in this riding since Candace was first elected back in 2008. In order to vote for me, you need to be a Conservative Party member. It only costs 15 bucks, and you can buy one at votebrandon.ca, and there are tables at the back, and people here are willing to help you sign up, and I really hope you can all sign up today. It'll just take a few minutes, but please sign up today. This race is going to be close. There will be many people jumping into it. And every vote is going to count. So the second thing I need to do is to get everyone you know to sign up. Your spouse, your parents, your in-laws, or even any kids over the age of 14, they can all join and vote for me. You can also go online quick and easy right after this. I've just launched new social media channels on Facebook, Brandon Leslie for Porter's Lisgar, and on Twitter and Instagram, at Brandon CPC. There is a launch video that went up sometime when I've been speaking that I think you'll all like, please go on and share that. Uh, that's going to be a big part of getting our online message across and really starting to build some momentum. But better yet, talk to people. Spread the word. Sign up, folks, and help us build momentum. The third thing you can do, if you're so moved, is to help out financially. It is expensive to run a campaign. I have to spend about $25,000 to reach out to people across this riding over the next few months. So if you can spare anything, even just $20, it will help go a long ways to getting our message out. And I've left the last and most important, left for last the most important thing I need you to do. I need you to vote. I don't know when or where it's going to be just yet. So I need you to be on the lookout for calls or emails from my team in the coming weeks and months that will let you know exactly where and when you need to vote. And I get it. This all sounds like a bit of a hassle. And I wish this were easier. But I can tell you that it will be worth it if we can get a Conservative MP elected 
who will continue the strong representation that Candace has offered this riding. <laughs> they will proudly stand up for you and our way of life and protect our communities. Now, I know I've been up here a while now, and I apologize for that. This stuff gets me pretty excited. But I want to invite all of you to stick around for a few minutes, as long as you want. I'd like to chat with each and every one of you, get some pictures with all of you, and get to know each and every one of you a little bit better. But folks, with your help, we can send the right conservative to Ottawa to take on Justin Trudeau and get this country back on track. Thank you all so much. God bless Canada. Thank you.